Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. First of all, uh, actually, it's w the sun is just going down. And if you're watching the video, the lighting is actually like really orangey and blue. And it's kind of it's like, it's dark, but I kind of like it. I don't know. I just wanted to mention that. It's kind of weird. I'm seeing it in the camera. Anyway, that has nothing to do with anything. Uh, today on the show, oh, first of all, uh, if you're listening to this podcast for the first time, go to my website, TomRay'sWebsite.com, and you can uh, subscribe to the show on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you get your podcasts. You can subscribe to it there. You can check out my daily webcomic that I do. And also, you can see all the retro and vintage items that I sell because I love them. And they're back there. Anyway, so go to TomRay'sWebsite.com and check that out uh, if you're listening to the show for the first time. And... Now, on to today's show, uh, I talked to somebody who signed up to do an interview. Uh, I did a call out for artists on my, on my mailing list and a bunch of people signed up. Super happy about that. And I, bet a I met a bunch of people that um, were on the list that I had not met before. And this one is uh, a person who is a self-described iPad artist. Uh, he has background in painting and cartooning, but when the iPad came out, he got the opportunity to actually go to a convention and show what you could do with the iPad and became an artist. Went, went out there and was promoting one of the the software, uh, the painting software programs that was out at the time. It was ArtRage. It's still out there, but he talks about how he did that, showed people how to use it, and then kind of just kept doing it. People liked how he was doing it. He kept getting uh, uh, asked to go back to these, they were called mobile mobile conventions. That seems weird. There's more to it than that. I can't remember the exact word, but it's mobile, uh, as in phones and iPads and things like that. So he started going exclusively with making things on the iPad, and that's the kind of artwork that he does. He's created a few books. He's done some children's books. He's done some travel art books and uh, all kinds of really cool things. So here is the interview on Tom Ray's art podcast starting right now. <laughs> My name is Raheem Nelson, and I'm an illustrator, and I create all my artwork on an Apple iPad. Where are you located? I'm located in New Haven, Connecticut. Okay. Have you always been in New Haven? Yeah, I've always been in New Haven. I went to college in uh, New York City at a School of Visual Arts, so I was commuting for a while, and you know, I spent a lot of time in New York, too. Oh, really? But uh, yeah, New Haven, born and raised. So is, you would actually commute to New York? Yeah. <laughs> why, why did you do that instead of just moving there? Well, I thought about dorming, you know, when I was going there, but I just didn't be like way too expensive, like just to make it work. It just wasn't feasible. Right. And then afterward, um, I think I didn't move there just because of cost. Like I was able to go there, network, do everything I needed to do with clients and then go home after that. Okay. So I think to me that always just seemed more feasible than you know trying to live there but like i really enjoy the city and i used to work there pretty often yeah but uh you know i think new haven is a good home base for me and i can just hop on the train if i want to go and see for whatever reason okay what were you so what were you taking uh as far as courses in in college sure uh cartooning was the major uh but for like my foundation year they had each of us do something outside of our field. So it was everything from like uh, drawing from life to oil painting to sculpture. Those were the main courses that I had. Really? And then for my um, second year, it was uh, like cartooning and writing for comic books and things like that. Uh, I did a lot of Photoshop courses, uh, some graphic design courses. So it was like a nice mixture of uh, pretty much everything I would need to be successful as a freelancer. Yeah, I was going to ask you what kind of cartooning. So you were actually doing comic book work and stuff. Yeah, that's how I got my start. Oh, wow. Uh, doing comics since like second grade. Really? What were you doing? Like yeah. what kind of stuff were you making? Uh, for a while, it was superhero comics, which were a lot of fun. And then I really got into doing uh, political comics. So I'll usually post those on my Instagram. Okay. All right. And so now you also did writing. Now, that's the, pro that's the thing I have a problem with. Like 
I would mm-hmm. love to do more comics, but the problem is, is I'm not good at writing. So, so do you have a background in writing? Like you said, you wrote a few comics. What kind of stuff did you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been writing comics for a long time now. Um, I would say for me, the best knowledge and experience I've gotten is through uh, just reading the comics themselves. But like uh, great authors like Alan Moore or uh, Chris Claremont, and I would just kind of take from different sources and then that would uh, influence my writing. And there's also really, um, I'm trying to think of the artist name, uh, Scott McLeod. He does a lot of really great work and I've read all his books and uh, just breaking down like the science of comics and just able to uh, apply his teachings and my writings. And there's just like a lot of practice and, you know, finding my characters voices and uh, having a lot of real conversations that would kind of like find their way into my books, whether it was like superhero or political genre or like I've experimented with a lot of genres with my writing. What kind of experiments have you been doing with your writing? Uh, so I was into the spy genre for a little bit. Like oh, neat. I was, in high school, so I was doing that. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, superhero, like I mentioned, um, for a while, it was also like a high fantasy, like Lord of the Rings. Like I had this series I was doing for a while. It up kind of like, Letting it go because it was just so much research. Like I was researching right. the crusades and you know just uh, Lord of the Rings and how to illustrate castles and buildings and knights and queens, princesses, that kind of thing. Yeah. And I think for the most part, I enjoyed uh, the setup, writing all the characters, writing the backstories, but then like doing it on a month-to-month basis. That ended up being like a lot of work. So I still have the work on my tablet, and my portfolio, and everything. Yeah. But I think it's something that uh, it's like, hey, this is something I like to do, but like there are other projects that uh, I enjoy doing more that are like kind of less labor intensive. Yeah. The freezing different things. Yeah. I had a, uh, I had an issue of a JRR token book that was, it was one that I'd never heard of before. And it's a, it's a name that I don't even know if I pronounced it was like Somalian or something like that. I don't mm-hmm. remember, but yeah, when you're talking about like a lot of research mm-hmm. and then also there's the whole, you make up, this universe inside of this fantasy world. And then you have to keep that consistent. He even exactly. had an appendix, he had an appendix in the back, like what characters backgrounds were and like how to pronounce yeah. the words and all it was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's so much extra work involved. Exactly. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, and also like with the spy thing, it's like, then you got to come up with like what the heist are. I appreciate that though, because I do love reading that stuff. And you, mm-hmm. when you read it and look at it, it's it's like oh that would be neat to do but no the background is just that's a difficult chore um, yeah wow that's cool and <laughs> and when you started doing this were you um, like I know now you you're you're labeled or you're you're labeled on your Facebook page as an iPad artist but mm-hmm. before this I mean how long was it before you actually moved into working mostly in the iPad like you had to start out bef- I mean the iPad didn't exist for ever right you know, so, <laughs> yeah. so what made you transition from say the hand drawing to ipad exclusively i think the best way to describe it was like photoshop was probably my entry way to doing digital illustration and i just wanted to be as mobile as possible and then when the ipad came out i was like oh this might be pretty cool to uh do some work on and i don't think i intended to make it be like my main device for creating artwork, but it ended up just being so handy and so much fun. And I just got a lot of traction out of it. And they just kept updating these applications so that, you know, the tactile feedback was so good. I was like, well, okay, I can just illustrate something, email it to a client, get feedback, make revisions if I need to, and then just keep going on with the process like that. So it's like my toolkit is all in one place. And uh, whereas before I had to carry around like my I use like a lot of colored pencils and oils and acrylics. So I'd have to like have a whole entire set of things yeah. if I wanted to create something. But like I've taken this thing uh, abroad, like uh, all sorts of trips I've been on and it's just been like incredible. And what's the, what's the current software that you're using to actually illustrate and paint in? Mm-hmm. So I've got an iPad pro. Um, it was a gift from Apple. I got very, fortunate to uh, be kind of like a brand ambassador for them for a little bit. Really? And so I was just networking with them. I created a few illustrations, put it online, promote their product. I've uh, done some courses with them in like some of their Apple stores, like pre-COVID. 
And uh, the deal was like, you use this application, application you're a freelancer, just let us know what you're up to, report back to us, let us know how you like uh, the iPad, and you know, if you find any bugs, let us know. So I was probably doing that for like maybe three or four years, each time an iPad would come out, you know, they would send it my way, and it was a really great deal, it saved me like thousands of dollars. They kept sending you other ones? I mean, I, I, they, so the crazy thing is they would have these events in Tribeca, and I got invited to one of them, and it went so well. They're like, all right, we'll have you back for the next one. And so I would just request them and say, okay, like, when's the next one coming out? Like, can I use it? And the original agreement was I was supposed to give them back, but they were like, no, like, we like your work you're doing. Like, just keep it. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Now you just got them stacked up, and you're using them for furniture. You have so many of them. <laughs> well, okay. So here's, Pretty much. <laughs> here's what I want to know. How did you get – in that situation in the first place like how 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 do you approach yeah that that's a good story too (laughs) that's a good story so i've got a friend uh he's an illustrator he does a lot of work for uh the new yorker and a a few other different publications too like he's very very good his name is uh george colombo and george uh was doing a lot of watercolor yeah he's really cool guy (laughs) Doing a lot of watercolor illustrations, uh, comics, and things like that for uh, you know different magazines. And then the iPhone came out, and he really blew up because he started doing iPhone paintings in New York, where he's based. And so TV interviews and all this other kind of stuff. So after that, uh, the iPad comes out later. He starts using that. He still gets. He's getting a lot of acclaim for using this device now. It's on a bigger screen. So he's using the iPad to do these New Yorker magazine covers. I was like, oh, this guy's work is really great. And I was going to New York, kind of following his footsteps and creating like these urban landscape paintings, like the Empire State Building, Chrysler Building. And I got the idea. I was like, oh, let me turn this into a book. Like, that'd be pretty cool. And George had done the same thing previously. So I was getting a lot of uh, inspiration from him. So I had an opportunity to meet him at uh, the Museum of Modern Art where he was doing a workshop. I was like, cool, like I'll introduce myself, you know, if we hit it off, like maybe something will come of it. So uh, it went over really well, like where he's looking over my shoulder to see what I'm working on in the workshop. I'm like, oh, okay, it's going really well. And then so afterward, I said, hey, I'm working on this book. Like, I love your work. Like, do you think like, you'd be willing to look at some of my pieces and like do a little write-up for me? So he does the foreword to my book, and then he does the foreword to my second book that you know, I'm self-publishing through Lulu, and it just turns into like this great friendship and mentorship, and I'm going to him for advice, and you know he's asking me things about what I know, too, so it's like we're both getting something out of it, and it's really cool. And he says, hey, I can't make this um, event that Apple is doing. Um, it's going to be in Tribeca at this restaurant. Like, do you want to go and network? Like, you can go in my place. I was like, yeah, sure. So I went and I made such a great impression that they invited me to other events. And that's how I ended up getting the iPads. Oh, wow. And so it was because, so, I mean, obviously you made a friendship with the guy and that's super cool, but really it was just a missed date and you took his place and then it was like, okay, now you're in. Oh, man, I hate you so much. Um, No, I'm kidding. (laughs) That's that's really cool. And so I was going to ask you like uh, how you were publishing your book. So you went through Lulu. I, I yeah. forgot all about Lulu. Are you still using that for making it right now? Uh, for uh, for my books? next book, I'm going to. Uh, it's been like, um, I don't know, maybe a few year gap okay. between my last book, which was about the travel paintings, and uh, the next one. Because uh, I've, like, before COVID, you know, I took like this amazing trip to uh, Europe, uh, my first trip to Europe, actually. And I wanted to squeeze in as much as I could. So, like, I started in London and then I went to Paris. Avignon, uh, Barcelona, and then on the tail end, it was uh, Lisbon, Portugal. Hmm. So I've got like all these photos I've taken and paintings that I made while I was there too. So I want to make more paintings and just kind of compile it into a book and then like do journal entries for it too. Yeah, that was going to be the next thing I asked is when you do these, yeah, do you add written stuff next to it? And you like, how do you you lay it out? How do you plan it? Uh, So how I plan it is, it always starts with the photo reference. And then from there, I am going back to look at anything I wrote while I was there. I, I usually journal when I go to different places just to record everything. Yeah. And then the photos go along with that. I'm using the photo reference to 
create whatever paintings I couldn't make while I was actually over there. Because what these trips usually look like is I'm just going to a place and I'm painting something. Like maybe make like six or seven paintings in a few hours and then head back to the hotel or Airbnb, wherever I'm staying. And then just do the same thing all over again the next day. Wow. And was this just a vacation or were you actually going there specifically to, to work on this book? Um, I'd say a little bit of both. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, but it wasn't like funded by the book or anything like that. Like you didn't raise the money to go to Europe to, or did you, I guess, I don't know. I, again, I got very lucky with that. I had a contract uh, with this lady from Washington, DC. She wanted to uh, do a children's book. So she'd hired me on as the illustrator. Nice. And great ended up working out to fund that entire trip. Wow. How did you find the, how did you hook up with this person doing the children's book? I'd be curious. I know a lot of people who would like to make children's books, but mm -hmm. again, that's the whole, like one is a writer, one is an illustrator. And yeah, <laughs> like, so how did you actually find this person that wanted to work on a book with you? Uh, I think the trend is like all my big freelance jobs have just come from great referrals uh, through my friends or people I've worked with in the past. Uh, this person, her name is uh, Mia Robinson, and she used to run this, um, I forget what it's called. It was like a mobile, mobile digital art conference. It was in California sometimes, sometimes it was in New York, and I would go frequently and you know support and contribute art. So she said she had a friend in this person from D.C., and she was like, oh, I was looking for a children's book author. I can't really do it right now because I've got family things going on. I was like, sure, I'll take it on. And uh, it ended up being really cool because it was pretty much like um, – about an African-American mother and a daughter. The mother is really busy. And so the daughter has this dream about her mother, like to reconnect with her and build a closer relationship. And it's like this dream world, like this dream museum. And the mother is basically giving the daughter a history lesson about like the civil rights movement and the, the tech industry and all these famous people that she wants her daughter to look up to. It's like, you can be this person, you can be uh, Steve Jobs, you can be Rosa Parks. And just illustrating that was so much fun. Like the story was so rich and just really transformed in this great project. Wow. How many pages did it end up being? That seems like a novel. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're already talking about the sequel. Um, <laughs> nice. Maybe like 24 pages, something like that. Okay. And yeah. now, now that's another thing where um, traditionally books like that would be hardcover. And how is it, is this a hardcover one? Is it uh, self-published? Is it like, how, how is the book being put out? I'm curious how this is being sure. made. This one was also Lulu. Okay. Yeah. It is through Lulu. And a soft cover book. Okay. Yeah. And it, it's just been so long since I've used, I forgot all, until you mentioned it, I forgot all about Lulu. I've, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm familiar with just like, you know, the, the, the Kindle and Amazon self-publishing side of it. And, and Lulu, mm -hmm. I forget all about that. What's it like yeah. working, working in that platform? It's good. I absolutely love it. And, you know, it's nice that I have so much control over it where I can just upload everything as a PDF, just make sure the DPI is right, and I can review it at, uh, each and every step of the way before it's ready to go to publishing. Okay. Have you done any other children's books? Um, I did another one for the same author. Uh, it's called uh, Wow! Voices of Youth. It's about poems uh, that her students put together. And then other than that, it's just been uh, the travel books and then uh, the comic books that I was publishing through Lulu. Um, it's like there were political cartoons, but like they were also aimed at kids, too. Like I had two versions of it. Like one would be more for adults, one would be for like teens, one would be for, oh. um, you know, younger people. I like that. So is that, that is that something – what made you think of that idea? I've never really considered that, like doing ones that are more – kid base politically that's interesting what well, yeah how did you come up yeah. with that idea uh, i think the idea came from uh reading charlie brown and you know being interested in the boondocks and just seeing that there are these two extremes where like the boondocks would be like more adult oriented and yeah. peanuts like there are hidden layers messages but primarily you know you, you could watch it as a kid's show so they're like different levels to it. So I appreciated that. So it was pretty much like I would come out with one version and then I would illustrate a few other strips for the second version. And sometimes I would take things away, sometimes would add things. And then I'd just be like, okay, this is this teen version. This is an adult version. And I just put like an age rating on each one. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. And you're, you're absolutely right about the peanuts thing. That's true. There was, there was a lot of stuff that 
you wouldn't even get. It would be symbolic or something. Huh, mm-hmm. Interesting. I dig that. Um, and then when you were when you were starting out the the iPad and they were handing you the iPad and all that kind of stuff, I remember when drawing apps first came out and I was like, that's fantastic. But the other thing too is there were so many. It, it was like a all of a sudden everybody rushed to release a, a, some sort of drawing application, and mm-hmm. they were either really not good or they would use like the same or they'd be riddled with like pop-up ads or something like they were (laughs) virtually unusable. So what, what was it like when you first started drawing and would, you know, what were some of the software that you tried out and how, what particular app are you using now to actually do your artwork? Uh, So I've used a lot of art apps over the years since it came out. Uh, I started with Adobe Sketchbook Pro, Mm -hmm. which, you know started for the desktop and everything and i was kind of familiar with it i got acclimated to what autodesk programs look like in a mobile sector and so that was the very first one that i downloaded that was pretty much the reason why i got the ipad in the first place and it ended up working out really well Uh, i think one of the limitations for these programs was just um the ram like on the first ipad like it's pretty bad and so i'm trying to do like all these things and like it keeps crashing (laughs) sometimes like losing layers and like hours of work. I was like, oh, you can't be serious. So through different updates, you know, it got better. But like, I just kept fishing around to see what I liked best. Uh, second program I got was this one called uh, Art Rage. And I'm still, you know, really close friends with uh, one of the founders of the company. Oh. And what I enjoyed about this program is that it's like oil-based and watercolors. Uh, it's one of the best uh programs you can get for if you want to like replicate traditional media in a digital sense so like you can pick like what your canvas looks like you can pick uh, how your brushes look like do you want it to be a dry brush or a wet brush so i was just fascinated by uh, all these uh, options that you had uh, because oil painting was something i really enjoyed like high school all the way through college and it's just like how can i do this and have like this level of fun that i used to have well, always having uh, those materials around me, like 24-7 and buying a new canvas and going to the art store and get all this stuff. So that program was really uh, impactful for me and just my illustrative style for the iPad. Yeah, it, I forgot all about Art Rage. You're right. Is that the one where you could actually create a like a mixable palette? Like you could put yeah. paint down on it and you can actually blend it together and then use exactly. that? I forgot all about that one. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, I tried that when it first came out too. My main thing was uh, whatever one I could use, do the most with for free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, I I remember uh, after several years and then other competitors like Autodesk Sketchbook Pro is now like it, they they've just released the free or the whole entire thing is free and it's like yeah. the full use of it, which is really cool. I uh-huh. dig that. Um, I don't know how they're going about it, but you know it's. I'm I'm not complaining. Yeah. <laughs> and that is those are two of the better ones. Yeah, I forget what some of the, I, I think a lot of the ones that I tried aren't even around anymore. But yeah, yeah. it's funny that you mentioned that too cuz the third one I picked up uh was really popular at the time, but there just ended up being like I think issues with the developer or something like that where they went under. I was called um brushes Oh. And Brush was huge because, you know, it was actually one of the apps that George was using for his New Yorker covers. Okay. And then, like, it just blew up. Like, everybody was talking about Brushes for a while. Um, him and then uh, another friend of mine, Kyle Lambert, who does, like, a lot of movie posters. He does stuff for uh, Stranger Things. And he did, like, this portrait of Beyonce that went viral. Oh. He did that using the Brushes program. So I found out about it. And you could, like, create these art artistic time-lapse videos so that's what really attracted me to it and you know i was using that program uh for like some of my clients like they'd want me to make like these little time-lapse animated videos for them so i ended up like being really lucrative for me but then when brushes went under i was like okay like how else am i going to use this program they made it so you couldn't export these videos anymore like it just didn't work with a newer ipad so come on that's (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then I discovered this program called uh, Procreate, which is what I'm currently using, and it's oh. just the best. Like, it takes pretty much all the features from the programs that I mentioned, like with Art Rage and the mixable palettes and Sketchbook Pro and the nice UI. 
uh, and brushes and the videos it all in one package that works great on the iPad Pro or iPad Air, whatever you have. So I swear by uh, Procreate and I use it for uh, my workshops, use it for my personal work and my professional work. What were some of the time-lapse videos that you were doing that you said were lucrative for you? Like, what's the story behind those? Sure. So I think the first major one I had, the client was the go between client. So I did the work for HughesNet Cable Company, and the client was Global Works. So all the work would go to Global Works. They would pass it off to HughesNet. So I did... Um, probably eight commercials for them. Like they hired me originally for four, got those done over like, uh, I forget how long it was, maybe like four or five months. Okay. It was very important. And then they hired me to do more. And they specifically say, we want you to use brushes. We want you to give us the time-lapse videos and we'll uh, send you a script and let you know what we want to look like. So that was really great. Yeah. And I was able to, you know, just have that kind of opportunity and, you know, look great in the resume and everything and just led me to getting other jobs like it. Totally. Right. And I saw that you were doing one um, for Invisalign recently. Yep. Yeah, that was really great. I got that through my fiance and business partner. Nice. Uh, she was at a, a cosmetic dentistry and she was like, hey, like we're looking for uh, some artwork, like a video. And she was like, would you be willing to barter for doing Invisalign for your teeth? I was like, yeah, definitely. And she said, you can turn that into like an artistic video as well. So I did um, voiceover for it and oh. I came up with the scripts. Uh, I talked about like what my day job is and just how, you know, getting Invisalign kind of just elevated everything for me. Yeah. And it was just a really fun project. Like it felt like working on a little mini movie. It's like I'm just storyboarding everything and then I'm doing the, the illustration part of it, the, the voiceover making sure that the clips match up. So I just realized, I mean, I was kind of doing something like that for the earlier work. Mm -hmm. Like this was just like taken to another level uh, based on just what they were asking for with the, the the voiceover and, you know, having all these assets to work with. And even like I work with like some of the Invisalign trays and, you know, making sure that everything looked good from a branding uh, perspective in terms of the dentistry and Invisalign. So it ended up just being like a lot of fun and like, I kind of felt like my own project manager actually worked. Yeah. Out. Like not an illustrator. I know. It's, you were doing everything and you had to go, all right, I need to get this done. You were in charge of yourself. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> were you your own worst employee <laughs> or, or did everything <laughs> no, go swimmingly? I, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And you mentioned before that when you were doing, um, when you were drawing in the I iPad software, you said you knew the developer for uh, Art Rage. Yeah, yeah, he's a good friend of mine. His name is uh, Uva, and he uh, his company is called Ambient Design. They're uh, based in New Zealand. Okay. And I met him at Macworld uh, in San Francisco. I went there for a little trip. Uh, we connected. We became really good friends. And then so whenever I was in California, and I was going to California like every year for like four years for a mobile digital art conference. Really? And we would just connect and we would get lunch and talk. I'd ask him like how the app was going, I'd give him feedback. And uh, it just ended up being like a lot of fun. I ended up making like some instructional videos uh, for Art Rage uh, as well that I got hired to do. Oh, cool. So just like we always had like a great work uh, relationship and friendship. I'd never heard of this mobile digital art conference. What? And you went several times and I, I'm, this is the first, well, maybe I've heard of it and I just didn't know what it was, but what is it? <laughs> yeah, you can definitely send it your way. Um, it's changed. Like what it used to be was, it was like a series of workshops uh, mixed with uh, an art gallery and like a, just a big presentation of what app developers uh, had to offer, like their latest offerings and just, looking at what comes next. Uh, Autodesk was heavily involved in it. A few other smaller app developers. Uh, Procreate was there too. Art Rage. I think Adobe was there at one time. It was just like a meeting of the minds. It was like the artists, the app developers, and everybody in between. See, that's what I think is fascinating about this is with that, I mean, they're the big ones there that you just mentioned, but I also mentioned how like everybody's making these little drawing apps and it kind of seems like they're just funding it through advertising like what's 
how do they fill up a conference room? Like what kind of stuff goes on there? I guess I, you said that there were, yeah. there were, uh, what was it? Panels or something or not panels, um, instructional. I don't remember what mm-hmm. you called it, but <laughs> yeah, panels, workshops, uh, workshops. Like, that's what it was. You know, presentations, workshops, that kind of thing. Okay. And mm-hmm. so like, what, what is the type of other stuff that you see there? Like, I'm picturing Comic-Con for some reason, and that doesn't seem right. So, uh, <laughs> it's a lot like it. Yeah. is it really it's a lot okay. like it? All right. It's enthusiast, uh, professional artists, uh, semi-professional artists. That was pretty much the, the kind of people we were working with. And like, it would really fill up because it wasn't just the people that were doing it to make a living. There were people that were just doing it for fun. Like, oh, like I just want something uh, to do. I want to come out to something that seems really cool. And, you know, people would buy artwork. Uh, people would uh, present artwork and they would just learn how to use these programs. So it was like this big educational summit, so to speak. Yeah. I'm picturing that it would be a good opportunity for printing companies to be there. Yeah, 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 definitely. Because definitely. because while you're drawing the digital art, and that's great, and also sharing it online, that's very common. Mm-hmm. But there's still, you'd like to be able to print it, and it would be, I don't know. It's, I, but also, the other thing, too, I keep having this conversation with people, is I feel like printers have not technologically changed in like 10 15 years i feel like they're still mm-hmm. <laughs> they're still so <laughs> clunky and old and like no advances have been made to them but i could be wrong who knows um have you ever i mentioned comic-con now i'm thinking about comic cons and you said you were doing comic books have you ever displayed or, or tabled at a comic-con before i've always thought about it like yeah i've never actually done it like i know people that i've done it and i've been i've been going to comic con for a few years most heavily into comics always loved it um i think in terms of an actual table like it just didn't really happen because like as much as i enjoy comic books i think a part of me is more of an illustrator than a cartoonist like even the comics i make now it's usually like one shots like you'd see in the new yorker right where it's you know panel joke and then you know that's it and i can move on to something else where it's like the long form stuff i really enjoy it but i don't tend to do too much of it now. Like right. it's more like illustrations for my clients and then myself too. It can be so time consuming. I know. Yeah. It's it, whereas you can work on one piece and I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. It, it, now what, then where do you, I mean, or do you do public displays of artwork? I mean, have you pr- uh, presented any of your stuff in like gallery settings or uh, what have you done publicly with some of your stuff? Uh, for a while uh, in New Haven, I was um, doing, let's see what it's called. Uh, citywide open studios, uh, pretty much like artists open up their studios uh, in public places. We exhibit work. Uh, there's a site in New Haven called the New Haven Armory, hmm. which basically gets converted into an art gallery each year. So I was doing a lot of that uh, pre-COVID uh, where I would basically take uh, my work. I print it out. Um, it was pretty much like either eight and a half by 11, uh, 11 by 17 prints, uh, Portraits, uh, pop art, uh, comic books. So I've had any books, I'll display those. Yeah. Uh, that was really fun. I've curated art shows in the past. Uh, it's been a while, but I have done that. Um, I did an art show uh, primarily based on Art Rage. Uh, like when they launched their iPad app, I think uh, I basically put out a call to artists and I was working with them too. It's like when I was building the relationship with Uva. Uh, so I got, I want to say, 30 or 40 artists from around the world to contribute art. I printed up everything. It was like an entry fee. And I just exhibited uh, all this iPad work um, at this co-working space in New Haven called The Grove. Uh, no longer there, but, you know, it was very impactful. Oh. Uh, Two-night event. Uh, so much fun. Got um, TV coverage for it, too. I think it was like my first TV interview was on WTNH 8. And it was just an amazing thing because it wasn't just me. It was like I'm able to support all these other artists, which I think is a lot of fun for me. Like I do yeah. really enjoy curating and seeing what other work people uh, have going on and just kind of giving back. Like it's not just about me and the work I'm doing. You know, I like to make sure everybody you know is able to give on. Yeah, no, that's great. And I saw that you did some, uh, you've actually done a few mur- murals in the past um, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me about some of yeah. those. What have you been doing? So, um, 
my favorite one was one that I just did personally, like, whereas before that it was just like group murals that I happened to have a, a part in, but this was like such a big assignment. And so on the tail end of one of these mobile art conferences that I, I went to, I think before I booked the flight, I was like, oh, you know, I've never been to Los Angeles before. Like, let me, you know, try to tack that on the trip because the actual conference was in San Francisco and Palo Alto, that area. So I was like, let me see if I can do L.A., you know, after it's over and then hang out with a few other people. Uh, so I want to hang out with my friend Kyle and he was in L.A. He was like, yeah, like, we'll make that happen. You know, just let me know uh, when you're going to be coming through. So I did that. And then I realized that I had another friend out there that I used to work with uh, for New Haven Public Schools. Uh, her name is Claire. And she had a friend in New Orleans that needed some mural work. And he has like restaurants all over New Orleans that are really popular. And for each restaurant, he has a mural. So I said, oh, OK, I've done a few murals in the past uh, with other people. Like I'd be willing to take that on and just see what he's looking for. So uh, he hires me for it. Uh, I get there. He, he covers like a hotel flight and everything and uh, paint supplies. And like just you know, these two big walls that needed to get done so i'm like all right i just bite off more like a chew and so i'm talking it through with him he was like okay like i'm just looking for characters and some scenery like you can't really paint the entire wall like i don't want like a background color or anything i was like okay that actually makes it a lot more feasible so he gives me a key to the restaurant and he's like you just come and go as you need uh just you know <laughs> nice. the work and get it done so i actually finished early like i'm putting in a lot of man hours to so these murals and so I start one and he gave me like a lot of free reign too, which is really cool. So when you look at the mural, like it's two pieces, but it looks like one, it connects like with uh, waterfalls and there's like a geisha and a, a samurai and a dragon. Mm -hmm. So it goes from like one side of the restaurant all the way to the other. And I'm seeing like people take pictures of, of it, you know, post, post it on Instagram and everything. And I'm like, this is just really amazing. <laughs> like it was such a cool job. Like it's, um, to me, it's probably my favorite freelance assignment that I've had, period, just because I had so much time to get it done. I made my own hours and I was able to like go out to restaurants and enjoy like jazz music and eat food. Like it was just so cool. Right. How long did it take you? A little under two weeks. And I had to oh, get it bad. done within that frame. Thanks. Because I had to go back to work for my school job. And I didn't want to tell them, like, hey, I'm in New Orleans for this <laughs> time. Like, that's not going to apply. I mean, they know I do artwork and everything, but I, I just wouldn't want to put them out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And how have you been uh, – I mean, you were out there doing that clearly when people could go out there and do that. How have you been adjusting with the way the past year has been? Like, how has that affected you artistically? Or how have you changed how you're promoting yourself or putting yourself out there over the past year? It's been really interesting with the way the freelance has been going. So I'm doing a lot of, uh, have you heard of graphic recording? I'm not sure. Okay. It's graphic recording or known as a uh, graphic facilitation. And basically I'm in a meeting and I am note taking, but I'm also creating illustrations that go along with it. So if the conference is about, um, how COVID impacts healthcare, for instance. I might write that out as a statement and then maybe make a, a person's face with a mask over it. And I jump to the next bullet point. And then by the end of it, it's like, um, you know, important points from the meeting mixed with illustrations. So it's pretty much like a live infographic. Mm -hmm. and I've been doing a lot of those over Zoom and I'm being hired by a company called uh, Drawing Booth. And they just started getting into the graphic recording thing. Okay. And they know background so it's been very good very uh lucrative and you know i can just like hop on my laptop and sit in a conference discover something interesting and then create like a takeaway for the attendees nice okay and as you described it i had heard of that i guess i just couldn't remember what it was called um that's cool how did you how did you end up uh finding that opportunity i found that opportunity through um a friend of mine her name is elkie and she uh, runs Drawing Booth, and they're based in New York, and they're based in Europe. Okay. And uh, I applied to get a job with them probably like six years ago. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, the job basically entailed going to work parties and creating portrait illustrations of people. 
And I can do portrait illustrations pretty quickly, you know, like uh, caricatures and things like that. But uh, they were just looking for a specific style that didn't quite gel with the way I work. And, you know, it was fine. Mm -hmm. And I stayed friends with her. I was like, hey, you know, if any work opportunities come up that I'm actually a good fit for, let me know. And I had done graphic recording in the past with different freelance uh, companies and gigs and stuff like that. And so she had me in mind. She was like, hey, like, I know you know how to graphic record. Uh, we can have you in to uh, do this. So, you know, I would go into the meeting. I would do all that. And it ended up being, like, really great for everybody. Nice. I feel like you just seem to happen to know people with all these opportunities that you have. It's always like, I knew this person who needed this thing. And, and yeah. that is, that's not uncommon. That's kind of the way it goes. So it's, it's always good to network. It just proves that it's a very important thing to, to do. And I always got to remember that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are some, yeah. other, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Network stuff too. Like I've, um, had opportunities to expand my horizons. Uh, like I mentioned my fiance earlier, uh, we've done a lot of work together with uh, the pandemic. She's on a, a committee to end solitary confinement, and I've been enlisted to do everything for them, uh, like with logos, and uh, I've done some marketing for them, and I do photography and video. We do that part together. We do a lot of it together. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's gotten me a lot of opportunities with that since she's on the committee, and we've done like some PSAs. We've done like uh, Instagram campaigns. So it's been really interesting to like put that hat on, like the editing hat, the photography hat. And I would just do photography for myself, which was a lot of fun, but like applying it into uh, like the workspace and the, the activism space has been really cool too. So I get to tell like a different kind of story. Whereas before I just like maybe go and travel and take a few pictures and do some documentary stuff on my own, but like doing it in a freelance capacity, like was a lot of fun too. Like still a lot of fun since I'm still doing it. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I was going to say, you wouldn't do it otherwise, really. <laughs> I mean, if yeah, you exactly. Like it. I try to just take on things that I enjoy. <laughs> what are some uh, things that you're working on right now that you uh, could tell us about? Like what are some of the projects that you have coming up or or projects you're currently working on that you can share? Sure. Yeah, I feel like I've just got a, like a laundry list for you, but like I'll, I'll definitely let you know. <laughs> So uh, the first thing uh, that comes to mind is um, the, just the, the network marketing game that I'm doing with a company called uh, 2030 or Bust. Mm -hmm. And 2030 or Bust is about climate change. It's about everybody doing their part to make a dent in you know, just what's going on with climate change. So I found out uh, about this guy through um, my fiance. And uh, this guy's name is uh, Lachlan Arts, and he's based in New York really dynamic personality, knows what he's talking about. And he was looking for a uh, distribution, like somebody to put his stuff out there on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And he had those accounts already, but I think he was looking for somebody just to, uh, that you know knew the ins and outs of social media and was willing to just give 110% to it. So I actually just right. started this opportunity uh, a few days ago. Oh. And it's been really good. Like I've used uh, Twitter for a few years, like just for my art and I've done everything from like writing press releases to creating um, uh, TV interviews for myself. Uh, so all those things that I use to market myself, now I'm using it to market this campaign. And you know, it's going over really well so far and I'm just picking up a lot of uh, different things and I'm planning out my posts like from week to week to week uh, to uh, make sure everything looks good. And I'm right. talking to him pretty much every day and he likes the way things are going. Like I'm actually working on getting him on the daily show. So like fingers crossed on that. Really? <laughs> like all these ideas are just coming in. Like I'm, I'm on um, this app called uh, Flipboard a lot. So I'm getting like a lot of new stories that are coming to my feed anyway. Yeah. And then, so the like, ideas just start flowing as I'm reading different articles. I'm like, okay, I can try this. I can try that. So it's like just taking my creativity and, you know, channeling it in a different way. Nice. What are some of the ways that you're promoting yourself? Yeah, so I've got a website. It's RaheemNelson.com. So I promote that heavily on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. I also have a YouTube page, where I ha which I have a, a lot of uh, different instructional art videos. But uh, I think right now, like, the I'm just getting a lot of different referrals from people. I think that's where the success has been. Like, Instagram has been really good, too. I promote on that. Yeah. I do some videos uh, time to time. Like, I will uh, do, like, live instructional videos on Instagram Live, and people see that and pass that along. And then just build up my credibility in my portfolio. Yeah. And and you do your speed drawing paintings too. I've seen a lot of those on your YouTube page. 
And those are really mm -hmm. fun to watch. Thanks. <laughs> Um, and now is there, um, one last question, is there anything like you'd like to mention or anything coming up or anything, it doesn't even have to do with anything we talked about today, but it, something you'd like to mention to people that you'd like them to know, or I guess first and foremost, I want to plug my amazing talented fiance. Her name is, uh, Raisha Bivens and she's a social activist. Uh, she's all about uh, ending uh, solitary confinement and getting fair treatment for everybody in the justice system. She had a victory recently. Her uh, brother was uh, formally incarcerated uh, pre-trial. Okay. And through her advocacy, uh, she was able to not only get his bond lowered, but you know, get him out and get him into a treatment setting where you know, he can just live his best life and thrive. So we're working on a, a documentary right now just on this journey she's had, like, which has been over like wow. three years, I think. And it's just amazing, like just being able to uh, talk to him uh, in person and not over a phone. Like, it's just been uh, amazing for me, amazing for her. And like, I just see her as one of the main factors in reuniting her family. And I, I just think it's a story that needs to uh, be shared. And you're filming this yourself. Yeah, we're doing it together. Like I'm doing the editing and uh, the video and she's also giving the feedback. Uh, what she's really good at is uh, being a creative director. So she's got like this uh, overview of everything where she can just see the ins and outs. Yeah. Wow. That's really cool. What's the time? What do you think the timeline would be on this project? So we're doing it uh, in episodes. Uh, I am oh, adding cool. uh, episode two right now and uh, uh, one is pretty much done and ready to go. Probably just make a few tweaks here and there, maybe add a title card. And then we'll just be rolling it out shortly, hopefully. Oh, wow. You'll have to let me know when that comes out. I want to check that out. Absolutely. All right. And then also, uh, where should people go to see more of your stuff? Where are some places that they should be directed to? Uh, so right now, I definitely want to direct everybody to uh, the Twitter account that I'm running, which is 2030 or bust. Uh, definitely check that out. We've got a great campaign going on uh, for climate change. And uh, for my personal artwork and uh, my art videos and everything, you can go to RaheemNelson.com. That connects to all my social media feeds. Uh, you can see my entire portfolio. You can uh, see my uh, client work. Uh, you can see my personal work, too. I try to just keep everything in one contained place. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today. I'm glad I got to the chance to meet you. This has been great. Yeah, it's been great, Tom. I really appreciate you. Mm -hmm.